What would you do if you saw a UFO and then found what looked like a piece of it on the ground? Well, we found someone determined to get to the bottom of a similar mystery, and he took matters into his own hands. July 27, 2018. Jesus Morales, a student from Ventura, California, is out walking his dog when his beloved pooch begins acting erratically. Jesus looks to the sky above, where he spots something that would change his life forever. It was about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I saw the UFO. It just was floating in the air, hovering. And so when I got a little bit closer, I decided to start filming it. What is that? What the f is that? Jesus watches the orb for about five minutes. Then he says it begins to approach him. And that's when things get really weird. My phone wasn't working, so I couldn't record. It looks like it's spinning, but it's mutating. The closest it came was about five to 10 feet, but then it took off into space and I never seen it again. The UFO may have disappeared after making Jesus's phone go haywire, but he believes it leaves something behind. I came up on this piece that was in the ground. It looked like melted aluminum. Jesus decides to put the alleged space debris to the test. I took it to a welder. He tried to melt it down. That was aluminum? That could be melted. And it didn't melt. What if it explodes? And a welder never seen any material like that. I'm 100% sure this, it was real, what I saw, and I believe. Did Jesus come face to face with a UFO? According to journalist MJ Benayas, his is one of an increasing number of sphere sightings, including one remarkable case caught on camera and leaked to documentarian Jeremy Corbell. One of the most famous spherical UFO encounters occurred in 2019. It was recorded by the USS Omaha, and it was over the Pacific Ocean. Omaha crawled to the ability to launch Hilo ASAP. The Omaha witnessed a, a large spherical object descend down and go into the ocean. Splash, splashed, mark bearing a range. We still today don't know what they saw and what that object was. It remains unidentified. The Omaha sphere seemed to track and follow the Navy ship, much like Jesus claims his object tracked him. So Jesus's story fits within the broader lore and legend of UFO encounters. There have been numerous allegations that the US government has acquired so-called meta metals from UFOs, going back as far as the infamous Roswell crash in 1947. If that's true, would the feds also be interested in Jesus's find? Let's dispatch our experts to see what they can determine. First, how can this object stand up to this kind of heat? We asked video effects designer and astronomer Mark D'Antonio. You can take a, a torch like that and aim it at some steel, and it won't melt no matter how long you do it. It might get it to look red hot, but it won't actually melt it. So metal like that doesn't have to be extraterrestrial. To be fair, we don't know exactly how hot Jesus's torch was, but we do know this. There are bigger issues with his metal fragment because Jesus has no evidence it actually came from the object. You didn't see anything falling, so you can't say for sure where it came from, especially here where you have farmer's fields. It could have been a piece of metal from a tractor. So if the fragment evidence isn't proof, could that sphere shut down Jesus's phone during his critical close encounter? These phones are pretty resilient, but uh, if you bombard them with electromagnetic force, it's possible that you can cause the phone to get scrambled a little bit. But to do that, you need a lot of power. OK, so that power source is a question. NASA geologist Bob Anderson sees another problem with Jesus' story. He said that when the object came close, the camera and cell phone stopped working. But there's no pictures of this object 20 feet from him. So there's a lot of doubt in my mind whether this is a true story. If Jesus's account is inaccurate, what's the accurate explanation? Anderson immediately rules out planes or drones. There's no control, there's no propellers, there's no rudders or anything on that. This object here is floating with the wind. D'Antonio agrees. The way the object moves is the key clue to its identity. It hasn't demonstrated any behaviors that would be considered classic UFO type behaviors. However, Mylar balloons tend to move slower and tend to move more horizontal than vertical for a period of time. But then as it gets higher, it'll accelerate upwards. So it 
acts like a balloon. It looks like a balloon. Maybe it is a balloon. Our verdict, mylar balloon. This object simply doesn't move with the speed or focus of other unexplained sphere sightings, like the Navy's Omaha incident. But hey, Zeus, if you do any more analysis on your metal fragment, hit us up. July 15th, 2022. It's a clear summer afternoon as Nisha Higgins is traveling down the highway in Tempe, Arizona. But as she drives past the airport, she catches something floating in the distance from the corner of her eye. So she pulls out her phone and captures this. Yeah, I see that. What is that? Let's zoom in. A mysterious looking dark, oblong object appears to be stationary in front of the clouds. Honestly, it looks a little like that 1957 Holloman Air Force Base UFO. Author Jason Martell agrees that something here doesn't seem right. We can see other clouds in the vicinity that are much more fluffy in nature. This one seems almost out of place. The object raises enough of a concern to wonder what exactly it could be, but it just in general, looks very UFO-like. A UFO in the shape of a cloud? It may be a possibility. If we think about ufology in general, there's many aspects where UFOs have used clouds or meteorological events to obfuscate what's really happening. Social media sites are littered with UFO cloud sightings. In California, Mount Shasta is frequently blanketed by strange oblong clouds, which has prompted some speculation that these clouds act as a UFO cloaking device, hiding alien visitation in plain sight. But others argue these strange shapes are proof of government weather manipulation. The phenomenon of cloud seeding is basically using certain chemicals that increase condensation inside the cloud, that way also increasing precipitation. This combination of chemicals has been known to cause rain clouds to form. We know that no less than eight states across the US, Arizona being one of them, actually use cloud seeding to mitigate drought. Hidden aliens, government weather manipulation, or something else, UFO clouds are having a moment. For millennia, oracles look to the heavens and judge the significance of strange shapes in the sky. But in this modern space age, some are asking, could many of these strange shapes have been UFOs all along? Let's see if our experts can figure out if this cloud could be more than a cloud. First, could there be a spacecraft hiding in that cloud? We asked video analyst Mark D'Antonio. The ATC, or air traffic control, has uh, pretty sophisticated radars. And right now, there's virtually no objects that can go undetected by airport radars. A check of FAA records shows no near misses in the area that day, nor were there any nearby rocket launches. And while some argue UFOs might well have radar cloaking technology, D'Antonio points out the FAA isn't the only one monitoring the skies above Tempe. If this was an actual craft, you can bet the folks from Williams Gateway or Luke Air Force Base, where there's lots of military presence, would have scrambled to go check it out. So if it's not a secret alien ship, is it a government weather manipulation program? Is this a cloud seeding project? The problem with that for me is that this is an extremely small localized cloud. But a cloud seeding operation is a vast operation. You're not gonna cloud seed right in this one little spot. I don't see any way in which this could be weather manipulation, actually. Okay, so if it's not artificial weather, could it be natural? According to meteorologist Juan Hernandez, the clue in the video is the surrounding Arizona terrain. If we take a closer look down towards the ground, we notice that there is some terrain. So this is the Tempe area, which is surrounded by mountains on the north side and the eastern side. These mountains, or specifically the cold gusts of wind that run up into them, collide with the moist atmosphere creating lenticular clouds that could look a little or a lot like hovering flying saucers. The wind cannot flow through the mountain. It must either flow around the mountain or on top of the mountain. That upcurrent creates a standing wave of cold air which then collides with moisture and forms this unique saucer-shaped cloud. But why does it appear to stay stationary, like an ominous hovering spacecraft? Although the wind is quickly moving, lenticular clouds 
oftentimes look stationary because that's the right condition for the atmosphere to condensate. After all, the perfect lenticular cloud conditions are created by unmoving terrain. So these clouds tend to form and dissipate in those perfect stationary spots. And they oftentimes look fairly ominous. So I can see why someone would mistake this for a UFO. Our verdict, lenticular cloud. We agree with Juan Hernandez that this is an extraordinary looking natural phenomenon. January 30th, 2022, Laguna Niguel, California. Stephen Greenstreet and his family are spending the day in Ocean Breeze Park when his wife points out a mysterious object in the sky. Man. As Stephen peers through the branches of a tree, he begins to record this. No idea what the heck this is. Take a closer look. Stephen zooms into an elongated, shiny object hovering in the clear blue sky. Now, we've seen plenty of UFOs on this show, but this one is kind of different. Look here. It appears to be made up of three different sections of circular or possibly cylindrical parts on top of each other. I'm not seeing any wings or visible means of propulsion, at least not at this angle. Stephen shot it from multiple angles around the park, and he admits he has no idea what he's seeing. The longer I look at it, the less it makes any sense because there was wind, but this object was stuck in the sky. I was just baffled as to what the heck this could be. Yep. I swear to God, it's been there 20 minutes. Could it be a UFO? According to science writer Amy Tidal, in this town, it's a definite possibility. This isn't the first time a local in Laguna Niguel has seen something strange in the sky. Most of the sightings in Laguna Niguel actually happened a decade ago, with residents seeing bright orange lights, white lights chasing red lights, and even bright green fireballs. In fact, some believe the evidence points to an alien presence in Southern California dating back centuries. Some caves feature petroglyphs that some say are evidence of ancient civilizations visited by aliens. The drawings on these cave walls depict shapes and some figures that many believe hint at aliens. Google UFO and Laguna Niguel and you'll see multiple sightings that have been reported in recent years. But why all the sudden activity? Well, many think Catalina Island just across from Laguna Niguel might be a factor. In 1967, two 12-year-old boys were allegedly abducted by aliens from a boat docked near the island. And even our own expert, Matthew Shadagas, has been studying strange phenomena over Catalina Island with the research group UAPX. But what do our experts think Stephen saw? Let's find out. We begin with aviation expert Tim McMillan. Could this floating object just be a balloon? Shape-wise, a balloon would be our best fit. However, we should see it floating away. So whatever we're looking at is able to maintain a stationary position far longer than a balloon would be able to. On the other hand, there's no telltale signs of UFO-like movement. We don't see any of the behaviors that seem impossible. When we think of UFOs, uh, extreme acceleration, you know, right angle turns, nothing that we see this object exhibiting is something that couldn't technically be done. Taking McMillan's advice to consider some more down-to-earth possibilities, we turn to science writer Mick West. He says the fact that Stephen was so thorough in filming this object rules out one possibility. One of the gold standards of UFO videos is to get multiple shots of the same thing from different locations. Again, using branches as reference. So this is definitely not a camera artifact because it uh, appears in the right position in multiple videos. It's definitely something that's out there in the scene. What about a drone? We're not seeing the standard quadcopter rotors, but West says don't be fooled by the slim vertical shape. The only thing that is left is a coaxial drone. Now, a coaxial drone is a drone where all the propellers are in line, one above the other. Some of them look like vertical cylinders. Coaxial drones are designed with two centrally positioned rotors, which provide more lift, allowing them to carry heavy payloads and also fly within tight spaces. And this object appears to have the same shape and design seen in a coaxial drone. McMillan likes that theory, though he adds that if it's a coaxial drone, it would be something unusual to see in the sky. They're not extremely common, but one of the things that coaxial drones have been developed for is the idea of delivery of goods or products. 
However, drone delivery is only available in a few test markets, and this one doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So why else would a coaxial drone be hanging in the sky above Laguna Niguel? McWest has an idea. Traditionally, aerial surveillance has been done with a helicopter, but now police departments around the country are increasingly using drones. So I think that's the most likely explanation based on what we see in these videos. Our verdict? We think this is likely a coaxial drone. Not only do the police use them to surveil, but fire departments often use them to aid in wildfire prevention. However, the purpose of this apparent coaxial drone remains a mystery. Because when we contacted the town of Laguna Niguel, they assured us they don't use any such drones. November 6, 2018, Arizona. A U.S. Army AH-64 Apache attack helicopter is preparing for a training flight. Number 281, taxi north of Tower 2 West, Slopes 1 count. The crew is just about to take off when suddenly something moves directly in their flight path. Take a closer look. The helicopter's thermal imaging camera picks up three bright objects that appear to instantaneously circle each other. UFO investigator Andy Marcial releases the video after receiving the footage from a secret source at the Department of Homeland Security. One of the things that stood out the most was the maneuver that was captured where they kind of went around each other in this very weird fashion. There's just nothing I know that can pull some kind of maneuver like that off in mid-flight. That's the mystery. In an earlier episode, we brought you this video, the mysterious UFO dubbed the Rubber Duck. Now we have another strange unidentified object also captured in Arizona by Department of Homeland Security cameras. According to journalist MJ Benias, when this video was examined at the science and tech website, The Debrief, they didn't know what to think. We brought in several experts to look at the footage, to analyze the objects in this video, to figure out what was going on. And confirmed that the point in the video where the objects appear to rotate around one another is an impossible maneuver. We featured videos of UFOs in bizarre circling formations before, like these flaming objects captured in the skies over England. But the speed and rapid change of direction with these craft are unlike anything we've ever seen. So what could they be? Well, Benaya says if you want an answer, don't ask the US government. When the debrief published this video and the story, the Pentagon did not comment on it. The DHS did not respond to requests for comment. Basically, the United States government did not respond to confirm the video. With the rubber duck UFO, this is the second leaked video from the Department of Homeland Security that Andy Marshall has brought to us. Clearly, he's got a motivated source sending him this stuff. And we've got something unusual going on in the skies over Arizona. But what? According to Benayas, the DHS wouldn't reveal any info and maybe even doesn't want us to know. So can our experts solve this? Let's see. We begin with Rich Hoffman of the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies. When I first looked at it, I thought that the video was quite interesting. And there have been a lot of UFOs seen around military locations. But is this a UFO? Hoffman isn't so sure. UFOs have a tendency to hover, and then they'll shoot either straight up or they'll shoot off at an angle. Uh, some are actually seen to flip on its side and actually shoot off in a specific direction. You don't see that here. The footage was captured at a military training ground. So could it be another military aircraft? That's what the pilots initially thought. Wow, those three really fast flying jets up there. But aviation expert Tim McMillan says, not so fast. So let's take you know, some of the, the, the fastest or best performance jets that we could think of that will be operating in this area. So F-16s, F-18s, something like that. They can't turn at such an extreme angle. They have to bank at a certain angle at a certain speed. Uh, the human body, frankly, just cannot handle the, the amount of G-force, the amount of pressure that, that it would take you. And so these, uh, these objects, uh, actually change completely and in a 360 degree rotation really in under three seconds you wouldn't see that from a jet it's it's too extreme of an angle so what could this be hoffman thinks an overhead view could yield some answers 
I went into Google Earth to be able to see the measure of the runway, and I determined it was 1,600 feet. And if you looked at that angle of the formation, it was about maybe 20 degrees above the horizon. So I'm able to take those and put it into a trigonometry tool that allows me to very quickly determine the object here is roughly about 300 feet in terms of the distance. And then you can come up with the measures and you find out that the object is about less than one foot in terms of its total length. A foot long object that can make quick turns while flying in a formation it leads Hoffman to only one conclusion. When you saw the motion and the, and the rotational pattern like that, it came to mind it's more than likely birds because birds move like that. They do play with each other in the sense of flying around in circles. They typically can be moving as quickly as 85 to 100 miles an hour. An entire swarm can swivel and turn in less than a second. Our verdict? We're going with birds. We agree with Hoffman that the lightning fast movements and tight turns aren't examples of jets at mock speeds, but instead aerobatic animals.